Good morning, family. Man, we are so glad that you joined us today. We're excited to be worshiping together, so I want to encourage you, wherever you're watching from this morning, or maybe by the time you see this, it's evening, I want you right now to just press into his presence. I love this song. It, it basically talks about how our God reigns, and I don't know about you, but that's so comforting to me in a world that can sometimes seem uh, crazy and chaotic to remind myself that God is still on the throne and that he reigns. He reigns in my world. He reigns in our country. He reigns in my life. He reigns in my marriage. He reigns in my family. He reigns in my finances. In fact, I want you right now, wherever you are, just can you open up your mouth? Can you just begin to prayerfully declare that? Make that a declaration right now over every part of your life. God, you reign. We just invite you to reign. God, I don't want to have the reins. I don't want to have the control. I want you to rule and reign in my life, in my mind, in every circumstance, in every situation. We bless you now. Come on, come on. Can you put those hands together? Oh, we bless you. Oh, you reign, you reign. Come on, can you just begin to say that? Oh, you reign. You reign. Yes, you do. You reign. Oh, yeah. Come on, just sing it out. Our God, He reigns, He reigns, oh yes you do, you reign in my life, you reign in this day, yes you do, oh, you reign in my marriage, you reign in my mind, you reign in my finances, oh God, take control, take control, Let's sing it. Come on, Christian, sing. Our God is great and glorious. We put our trust in your name, Jesus. Listen to this part. It says, able to save and deliver us. Come on, sing it out this morning. We put our hope. We put our hope in your name, Jesus. Oh, come on, say blessing, blessing and honor, glory and power unto our God forever and ever. All of the honor, all of the praise is yours, yours forever. Come on, sing it out, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Passe 
sink in this morning. morning. We lift you up, God. We lift up our hands. We lift up our voice to you. We thank you, God, that your plans are not to harm us, but that your plans, God, are to prosper us and to give us hope and to give us a future, God. And we just thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us and that you never leave us and you never forsake us, God. We bless you this morning. We honor you. We thank you. Good morning, family. We're so happy that you have joined us today. We're hoping that you are having an amazing time in God's presence this morning. And listen, if this broadcast has been a blessing to you so far, and maybe you have been tuning in for multiple weeks now for worship, uh, we would like to encourage you to prayerfully consider becoming a financial partner with Harvest Ministries. We'd like to just take a moment to invite you to become a giver. Uh, in, in Luke chapter 16, the word tells us if we can be trusted with little we can be trusted with much and so we need to remember even though times are guys times are pretty scary right now and i know many of us are going through uh, hardships with this pandemic hours have been cut some jobs have been lost or we've had to take on new responsibilities or maybe less responsibilities and we're having to trust God more than ever with our finances and we want to encourage you to please do not let your giving and your tithing take a back seat. We, that needs to be continue to be at the forefront. And let's continue to be good stewards because I've heard Pastor Dave say this many, many times, when we release what is in our hand, it allows God to be able to release what is in his hand. And God's what he has in store for us is greater and more incredible than we can anything we can ever imagine. So I want to encourage you today to continue to tithe and continue to serve. And if you haven't yet, continue doing, consider doing so. These broadcasts that you see every week, uh, it takes a lot of work to put these together, guys. They don't just happen. Any video editors in the house today, listen, it takes a lot of time to record these and to edit the videos and edit the sound and graphics. And it takes a lot of time and a lot of manpower to be able to, and equipment to be able to put these on. And so we need your help to continue to do that. And not only that, you know, we're a church, we have... Uh, expenses and financial obligations that we need to meet every month and we need your help with that but beyond that we want to continue to be able to pour into our city and uh, support missionaries around the world when people need help we want to be able to pr pr provide that monetary support so in order to do that we really need your help so please consider partnering with us today and listen, this is one of the areas in scripture where we say that we can test God. And so listen, it may be scary. The 10% of your income may seem like a whole lot, but listen, 
uh, when you do that and when you do it faithfully, you're going, you're going to be blown away by not just financial blessings in your life, but blessings over your family, blessings over your career, over your life, over your health. And so we, all of our givers and our partners, we thank you so much for supporting us and we love you so much. And right now, there are multiple ways that you can give. They should be showing on the screen right now. You can give online, you can give via text, or you can even just mail in your uh, gift to the church. The address is on the screen. And again, to all of our partners, we thank you so much for uh, giving and faithfully. We love you so much. We're so thankful for you. And right now, we are getting ready to transition into the Word this morning. We're so excited to start our new series on essential giving. And Pastor Dave Reagan is going to be kicking that off today. Uh, so get your Bible out, get a pen, get a notebook out, and get ready to take some notes because there's going to be a lot of incredible information uh, that we're going to hear today. So let's put our hands together and let's welcome Pastor Dave as we get into the Word today. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, family. It is an absolute honor to be able to share this online worship experience with you. I am stoked about the Word today. I can't hardly wait to get into it, but I really quick want to take just a moment right now and talk to all of the individuals that you might be new to our online worship experience. You might have been watching for a little bit of time or today might be your very first service with us. And I just want to pause for a moment and say thank you. Out of all of the literally millions of other services that you could be connected to and watching right now and being a part of, you're watching this one. You're choosing to be a part of Harvest, and I'm so thankful for that. But do me a favor, let us know that you're watching. How do you do that? By texting the word WELCOME to 904-853-3373. All of that information is on the screen right now. Text that word WELCOME to us, and what that's going to do is it's going to give us some information about you as well as you, you getting some information about us. It's important for connection. Also, if you're watching today and you're participating, let us know in the chat feeds right now. We would love to be able to interact with you. We have hosts that are being a part of the service, as well as our online pa pastor, Pastor um, Brian Murphy, can be able to reach out to you and connect and so forth, because this experience is vitally important. It's important to us, and we pray that it's important to you. So make that point of connection with us. We would also like to invite you to participate in something that we call Pizza with the Pastors, where Pastor Jennifer and I get on a Zoom call, and we spend some time with all of our new folks that are watching and being a part of the service for the very first time. You can text the word PIZZA if you're interested in signing up for that to 904-853-3373 so that we can experience that with you. The first 10 people that sign up, we send pizza to your house at no cost to you, and we spend some time on a Zoom call talking all about what God has called us to, as well as taking an opportunity to get to know you. We believe in connection. I think I've said that several times this morning. I hope that that is clear to you because that's what we believe in. So take advantage of those opportunities. Right now, let's do some emojis and some shouts and the high fives, all that other kind of stuff. However, you can respond right now in that chat feed so that we can connect with each other. I'm excited about this word. This is week two in our essential giving series. Um, I don't know about you, but being a giver was a part of the culture of the house that I grew up in. My mom and dad are givers. I've even talked about that recently on one of our services during the giving segment. I just grew up in an atmosphere where giving was patterned. And as we begin to pray about what we were to, were to call this series, essential giving just rang true to us. Essential, I gave this definition last week, but it, it means uh, absolutely necessary, extremely important. It also talks about an inerrant quality that we are, we have these traits. And, and I want to say that because inerrant is having the, 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 the trait and the quality of something else. And I, again, I shared with you, my mom and dad were givers. And I know that my t level of giving and the way that my family operates right now in that realm is a direct result of what was patterned for me. Uh, last week, I talked to you about the iron, and I gave you that ironing example. Um, a lot of things have not been patterned for us. So I know a lot of people that wear wrinkled clothes because they don't know how to iron. Well, hopefully they'll take advantage of that little tutorial that I did last week. But the truth of the matter is whatever has been patterned in front of you is what you're going to emulate. And what I believe God is wanting to do to us right now is change our pattern. You might even want to text that right now. Say, change your pattern. Some of us know what it is to take, but we don't know what it is to give. And the Bible says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Uh, I don't want to continue to unpack last week's message, though. I really want to get deeply into this week's because, honestly, I'm very excited about it because last night, 
God totally and completely changed my title and totally changed the way I looked at the scripture that he had already given to me. And I'm really excited about the revelation behind it. So come, let's go quick to the word. We're going to be looking at 2 Samuel, the 24th chapter, the 18th through the 24th verse. I'm going to read it out of the NIV. Uh, if you don't have the NIV, we got you covered. It's going to be on the screens in just a second or two. Let me read this to you. On that day, Gad went out to David and said to him, Go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aranah the Jebusite. So David went up as the Lord had commanded him through Gad. When Aranah looked and saw that the king and his officials were coming toward him, he went out and bowed down before the king with his face to the ground. Aranah said, Why has my lord the king come to his servant? To buy your threshing floor, David answered, so I can build an altar to the Lord that the plague on the people may be stopped. Aranah said to David, let my lord the king take whatever he wishes and, and offer it up. Here are oxen for the burnt offering and here are threshing sledges and ox yokes for the wood. Your majesty, Aranah, gives all this to the king. Aranah also said to him, may the Lord your God accept you. But the king replied to Aranah, now listen to this. No, I insist on paying for it. I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. That is so powerful. Let's pray together, then I'm going to get into this word that's entitled, The Tale of Three Givers. Father, I pray for an extra special anointing to rest upon this word today. I also pray for every person who is participating in this online experience. I pray that they would first and foremost know your presence, that during our worship experience, God, that they sensed and knew your presence, that every part of this online service has been pointing to you because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. And I pray, God, that wherever they are right now, whether they're in their living room, in their car, in an office cubicle, in a hotel room, uh, sitting in a park bench, watching it on their phone, wherever they are, I pray that you would saturate yourself in that place. And that they would sense you and know you and hear your voice in my voice. I pray that they would not hear me, but that they would hear you in the name of Jesus. Bless every person that is participating right now in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said amen. Come on, put amens in the chat feed. I don't know why I did all that. But put all that in there right now. I believe it's going to be a blessing to you what God has given to me. I want to really look deeply into this text. It opens up by saying, on that day. Well, you might have a question like I would and say, well, what day was that? Well, David had made a mistake earlier in the scripture, earlier in the text. He had messed up. He had made a mistake. And because of it, judgment had come from God onto the land. And at this moment, tens of thousands of people were losing their lives due to a plague that was sweeping through the land. And David said, what do I do? And God sends word through Gad, who's a prophetic seer. He's the voice of, of God to the, to the people at the time. And God says through Gad, go to the threshing floor of Aranah and sacrifice there. Now, I want to get ahead of myself, and I can't because there's so much in that. But he goes to this place, and when he goes, Aranah sees him coming. Now, let's stop for a second, and let's bring a little t context so what's going on? Imagine, if you would, being alive and well in this time of kings and, and there's a plague in the land and you know that thousands and thousands and thousands of people have lost their lives. You had heard tale that the reason why it had happened is because the king had messed up and God was judging your nation. And all of this news and all of this information was spreading like wildfire through the region. And now all of a sudden the king shows up at your front doorstep you're probably not going to be excited to see the king, especially the kind of king that David was. Now, David was a man who had a heart after God, but David was a warrior. David was a, a, a militant king. He was aggressive. He was somewhat dogmatic. He was passionate, and he had a lot of passion and a lot of compassion, but he was also a man of war. So you got to put yourself on our our shoes right now. Put him in, in his sandals. Uh, he's not all that excited that the king is there, but he's the king. And so you can almost see in the verbiage here, uh, what are you doing here, king, so to speak? Well, why, why have you chosen your servant's house today? He's, he's a little nervous. He's a little anxious. And understand what David says. David says, I'm here to buy your threshing floor. But that was not the instruction that God gave him. God said to go sacrifice there. So there's already an understanding of perspective on David's part. And there's already an understanding of perspective on Arnar's part. What are you doing here? 
The king says, I've come to buy your threshing floor. Now Aronah postures himself. No, 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 no. You don't need to buy it. You can have it. I'll give you whatever you need to. In other words, please don't kill me. Please don't do anything bad. I'll, I'm here to serve. I'm here to do whatever you need to do. Can you see Aronah's posture? Could it be a posture of fear? Could it be a posture of uncertainty, of maybe obligation? I want to pause for a second because in our Essential Giving series that declares that giving is absolutely necessary, it is absolutely a part of the Christian walk. It's exactly what John, excuse me, what John 3.16 tells us and what God did in John 3.16 when he gave, and because he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son in the King James Version. Because of all of those realities, we, we see this picture that maybe Arana offered to give this to the king out of a sense of obligation. As I started to say a moment ago, many of us are givers out of obligation. A tale of three givers. First is the person that gives out of fear. The person that gives out of obligation. They give because they're afraid of what will happen if they don't. And although their action is right, their motivation is wrong. Most of us, at some point in time in our lives, might be doing the right thing, but we might be doing the right thing for the wrong reasons. God really wants us today in this series to challenge our motivation. Do I give out of obligation? Do I give out of fear? Have I heard sermons about the curse of God that will fall on people that don't give? About bad things that have happened to individuals that rob from God and all of these other dynamics? Are, are we postured in fear and giving out of obligation? Or are we giving like David? Here's our second giver. He says to Aranah, we've already read it to you, listen, I'm not going to let you give this. I'm not going to take this from you. As a matter of fact, that was the verbiage that Aranah even uses when he first says, he approaches the king and says, just take this. Now, he obviously inserts the word giving later, but he says, take it. And David says, no, I am not going to take. I am going to give. That's what I'm here for. I am here to give. I'm here to first give an offering unto God. And so to give an offering unto God, I can't take from you to give an offering unto God. I just must give. So David postures himself in a right posture as that of a giver. He understands the dynamics of giving and he loves God. God is first place in his life. It's the testimony that God gives him. Think about that. God himself spoke about David and said, he's a heart. He has a heart after me. He's a man who has a heart after me. What is God's testimony about us? Man, I want my testimony from God to be about me, that I was a man who had a heart after him, who desired his presence, who desired to please him. David, however, was a giver. And he's so deep of a giver that he tells Aaron, I'll look and listen, I'll look and I, I am not going to offer God something that doesn't cost me anything. I'm going to give to God out of my best. It reminds me of a of a story that I heard a number of years ago, historically speaking. I'm a small student of Alexander the Great. Uh, he's an intriguing leader to me. Now, he was a little squirrely. He was a little interesting in some of his behavior and so forth, but he had unbelievable leadership style. And the history says that he was coming out of battle and he was journeying through the empire and he happened to be upon a beggar who was begging. And the beggar had asked for copper. And so uh, uh, the Alexander speaks to uh, the servant and says, what does he want? He says, he just wants some copper. And so at, at that moment, Alexander stops, he goes to his carriage and he grabs a bag of gold and he gives, he gives this beggar a bag of gold. And then he gets back up on his horse and he keeps moving along. And the servant then responds to Alexander and says, sir, uh, copper would have met the needs of the beggar just fine. Why? Did you give him gold? Alexander responds, copper might have suited the beggar's needs, but gold suits Alexander's giving. That's a powerful picture. And that is exactly the way David was postured in the moment. Sure, someone else might take from Arana and just give to God whatever he, he takes and gives and so forth and so on. And I'll just take it from you and give it to God. But David understood the power of sacrifice, the power of giving out of the overflow and the abundance of who you are. My question is, are you giving out of fear? Are you giving out of love? 
that then produces sacrificial giving? Are you giving to produce something that will also not just bless you, but bless your family? I want you to look at this scripture, Genesis, the 22nd chapter. I'm almost finished. Genesis, the 22nd chapter, the 14th through the 18th verse says this. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said on the mountain of the Lord is where I will be provided for. The angel of the Lord then called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. The descendants, excuse me, your descendants will take possessions of the cities of their enemies. And listen to this. And through your offspring... All the nations of the earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. The Bible says later on in Genesis, the 22nd chapter, that God gives instruction to Abraham to sacrifice his one and only son. And so he climbs Mount Moriah and on that mountain, he goes to offer Isaac as his son. And as we know the story and we, we get involved here, God interrupts this as he's about to plummet the knife through the body, the abdomen of his son. God interrupts the process and says, stop. The Bible says Abraham looks up and sees a, a ram caught in the thicket. And that ram is a type and symbol of Jesus. And, and then we catch up to Abraham then declaring that that place, underline that in your Bible, right? That place, in that place, he declares the Lord will provide. Most of us know the term Jehovah Jireh. That's that's where God is, 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 excuse me, that's where that place is named after what God did. Go back in your own, on your own time and study this for yourself because Abraham doesn't start calling God Jehovah Jireh. He calls that place Jehovah Jireh. It's a powerful thing. Now, what does this have to do with our story about David and Arana? I'm glad that you asked. What that has to do is uh, that, that that very place, the threshing floor of Arana is the place on Mount Moriah where Abraham goes to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. God chose that place for there to be sacrifice. It was in that place that Abraham offered his most prized possession, his most beautiful and cherished thing, the son that he and Sarah had been praying for and been wanting and been looking for and been waiting on for years, 25 years to be exact. It was in that place that Abraham chose to make the ultimate sacrifice and offer God everything that meant anything to him. The tale of three givers are those that give out of fear and obligation, those that give out of love, and that those that are, are, are there and give out of absolute sacrifice. Because understanding something, guys, when we give out of sacrifice, it doesn't just bless us. It blesses everyone connected to us and the generations to come. I think it is a very powerful reality that God, in this whole interesting scenario, paints this picture of giving, but also provides an opportunity of redemption. See, at that moment, it was the threshing floor of Arana, the Jebusite. But ultimately, that spot becomes the Temple Mount. It is in that place that the temple is built and the holy place is established. God saw fit out of sacrificial giving to produce and establish a memorial. I talked about that last week when we talked about Cornelius and his alms stacking up before God as a memorial. That place became a place. It became a memorial that then became the Temple Mount and every sacrifice and every everything that takes take place in the nation of Israel took place there. It's a powerful reality of what sacrifice produces. Now, I acknowledged this last week and I reiterate it today. I know that the elephant in the room is the fact that, you know, pastors and churches trying to take money from people and get something from people. And I hope that you can hear my heart in this message today and in all of the corresponding messages that we're not talking about getting something from you. Honestly, guys, we're talking about getting something to you. That's the truth behind giving. It's not about taking. It's about releasing because when I release what's in my hand, I've given this example so many times. When I release what's in my hand, it then opens up the opportunity for God to release what's in his hand. 
And what's in God's hand is far greater than what's in mine. Guys, I understand the power of sacrificial giving. I also understand the place of giving out of obligation and fear. And I will tell you from my own testimony, the, the best place to reside, the best place to occupy is the place where you give out of love that then leads you to sacrifice because in that place is the greatest opportunity for fulfillment. It's the greatest opportunity for blessing. It's the greatest opportunity for opportunity. When Abraham did what he did, he opened up the door for blessing to his entire family. And then the Bible says to the entire earth, that means me and you. You get that? You and I are blessed because of what Abraham sacrificed all of those many thousands of years ago. What is your giving saying right now? What is your giving doing? You might sit back and say, you know what, Pastor, I'm really not giving. I'm, I'm really, I would not consider myself a stingy person, a, 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 a robber or a thief, but I'm really not giving. Well, I want you to just take some moments in the next couple of days and really ask God, God, what do you want me to do to change that? How do you want me to give? This is not me taking up a, I need a hundred people to sell a thousand dollars and you're going to get a, a, a blessing in, a, in a, a day or two or in a thousand days, all your debt's going to be paid off or all of those other little things that I've seen happen all over the internet and all over television. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you seeing an opportunity to be a giver and to pattern giving so that your legacy is blessed so that others that might not even know your name experience a blessing because you chose to be a blessing. I think one of the greatest things that we could ever do is be a giver. And it is my opinion, and I believe that scripture substantiates this, that you are never more like God than when you give. Because God is a giver. I'm going to say it again, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave. I really want to encourage you to challenge yourself, challenge the level of your giving, because I don't care where you are in your giving walk. All of us could tend to be better at our giving. I really want you to pray and ask God to give you some counsel on what you can be doing to further his kingdom on the earth, whether that's sowing into harvest or sowing into other ministries, or being a servant leader, or, or going out and mowing your neighbor's lawn, or something. But more specifically, I don't want to get too far into servant uh, giving and giving on that level. I really want to talk more specifically about the biblical pattern of giving with tithing and offerings. Those types of gifts produce one of the greatest returns that you could ever know in your life. But I just want to encourage you to evaluate yourself and determine which of the three are you and what you need to do to get to the next level of giving. It is my prayer that this has really, really, really challenged you today, maybe even blessed you, maybe even opened up some opportunities to see change in your life. We never like to close out any service without giving a person, any person for that matter, an opportunity to accept Jesus. All that I'm talking about today means nothing without Jesus. Everything must be done in and through Jesus. He's the only way that we can approach God. He's the only way that we can have a relationship with God. So if you are in that position today that you're far away from God, you're not in relationship with him, and you want to change that, you want to start implementing some of these things, you got to start first with salvation. you got to first start with Jesus by what? Giving your life to Jesus. How do you do that? You confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. That's what Roman tells us. Pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I believe that you are the Lord, that you gave your life so that I could have life. Come into my life. Change me from the inside out. Thank you for being my Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. That's the most powerful gift you could ever give, giving yourself to Jesus. Right now, I want you to reach out to me and let me know if you prayed that prayer. This is a, a walk that you don't do by yourself. Right now, my email address is on the screen, and that's just between me and you. And please understand something. I don't judge anybody because I myself are just like you. I'm a sinner saved by grace. But please reach out and let me know that you prayed that prayer with me because we want to be able to resource you. We want to be able to get you some information. We more importantly want to be able to pray for you. 
So please reach out. Let me know that you prayed that prayer because ultimately, guys, that's the most important decision that you could ever make. I am thoroughly excited that you were part of this online service today, and I pray that you were blessed by it. If you were, do me a favor. Hit like. Share it. Let individuals know about it. Uh, be be one of our broadcasters, if you would. Be one of those individuals that lets individuals know. If it blessed you, please do that. Also, if it blessed you and you would like to be a blessing to us, uh, giving information has been on the screen throughout the process of the service, but it's on there right now. If you want to give to Harvest, understand you're giving to a ministry that believes in giving. We don't just believe in, in hoarding and storing up and just having a lot of excess around us. We believe in giving. That's the reason why we practice what we preach. That's the reason why we preach what we preach is because we practice what we preach. Take that opportunity. We would love for you to be a giver. We would love for you to connect with us in that fashion and that way to enable us to continue to reach people all over Northeast Florida and the world with the cause of Jesus. Again, thank you for being a part of this. I bless you now. I bless you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I would that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I claim abundance and supernatural increase to come and be one with you all the days of your life. In all of your getting, get understanding. Don't just discover, but fulfill your destiny. Please let about 15,000 people know that you watched this today, that you were part of the service. We are so honored to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords with you. We will see you next week, but until then, peace out. Hey family, thank you so much for joining us for our online worship experience today. We're so happy that you joined us and we pray that it blessed you. And if it did, do us a huge favor and just leave us a comment in the chat section right now. Let us know what God is doing in your life. Let us know how this message blessed you. Uh, listen, testimonies are a very powerful thing. Uh, they not only give God glory for what he's done, but they, they also serve as an encouragement to others. There may be someone watching right, right now that is going through something similar to you. And if they hear your story and if they hear what God is doing through your life, then it'll encourage them and say, hey, if God is doing it for them, he's going to do it for me. Amen. So let us know. Talk to us right now. Let us know. Give us some feedback. And also, if you've made a decision today to follow Christ for the first time and make Jesus the Lord of your life, please, please, please let us know. We are so happy for you. And this is the greatest decision that you will ever make in your life. And it's an, inc an incredible journey you're about to start, but we are not meant to walk it alone. So please let us know because we would love to partner with you. We'd love to connect, send you some resources and just watch walk alongside you as you begin this incredible new journey in life. Again, we're so happy for you and we believe that God is going to do some amazing things in your life. Listen, uh, we want to invite you right now to please, if you are watching right now and you are interested in maybe finding out a little bit more about Harvest Ministries, what we're about and what we believe that God has called us to, we would like to invite you to uh, sign up for an event called Pizza with the Pastors. We do this every month. It takes place via Zoom and, and it takes place with our lead pastors, Pastors David, Jennifer Reagan, and several other members of our pastoral team. And it's just a time uh, to be able to talk, hear, from, hear them share, hear from their heart, and uh, you would be able to ask them any questions that you might have and just get to know one another more. And if you would like to do that, it's an amazing event. Please sign up for it. The information should be on your screen right now. The first 10 people that get signed up gets pizza delivered to your house on the church. So please sign up today and we will look forward to connecting with you further. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. We love you. God bless you. And we will see you next week at 1030 a.m. Have a great week.